Now let's, I'm going to go through and set up a, a server on Hetzner and show you pretty much the uh, ways to go about it. Um, of course, there's going to be a couple things where I'm not going to show you because, uh, you know, IPs or uh, passwords and stuff like that, but I'll show you the quick way of how to go about things. Let me go ahead and change to here and get this all ready for you guys. Now, the nice thing about Hetzner, because they have a one-click install, so you really don't need to um, do much of anything. Just click a button and uh, sit back and relax, right? Uh, of course, the one thing you got to do is make a, a, a account on Hetzner and sign up for their services. So all you got to do is when you go in through Hetzner, you'll go ahead and set up a uh, your server list. You go through, you set up your project. It's it's a simple, just like click a button, title with whatever you want. Um, actually, what I should do is go over here first and click on add server. Now, of course, depending, this is all depends on where you are in the world. So for me, the Ashburn, Ashburn, Virginia location is closer to me. And here's the important bit. You want to click right here where it says apps, this tab right here. And they have their own section for owncast. So you want to make sure you have that selected. Go through and you can either do shared via CPU, virtual CPU, or you can have a dedicated. It all depends on your price budget and how much you want to spend. But for my use case scenario, I go for the shared VPU, or virtual CPU. And as you can see, you can set this up for $7.55. Uh, that's around like $7, $7.50, $7.60 uh, USD, or depending on whatever um, currency that you are using. So it's relatively inexpensive to get an uh, owncast server started up. And this is more than enough headroom than what you can usually need for a simple owncast. I mean, you got three virtual CPUs, you got four gigs of RAM, storage at 80 gigs, that's that's way more than enough. I mean, owncast takes up a tiny little bit of that, so you don't have to worry about that at all. Traffic is 20 terabytes. And you can bump it up depending on if you start, you know, need some more space or some more ter uh, some more uh, CPU and stuff like that. If if need if the need arises, if you become one of those very large owncast streamers, congratulations. That's pretty awesome. But you know, for everybody else like us, um, the three, three, four and 80 is perfectly fine. So make sure that is selected. You go to networking. Uh, you can set up the IPv4 or six. You can do SHH, SHH keys. I know words are hard today. Uh, you can set up volumes. I'm just quickly going through this. It's upon depends on your level of expertise and how secure you want to make this. Again, like I was saying, for this particular uh, scenario, this is going to be a, a quick up and down. Um, this server is not going to be long running. <laughs> uh, so you go to your placement groups, you labels, cloud config. And um, what I'm going to do here is go ahead and call this my Teuton Waffle own cast because I'm going to set it up on my domain name or my URL. And of course, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time, not much, just like a minute or less than five minutes before our server is fully spun up and ready to go. Now what's going to happen is that I'll get everything set up. Uh, what I want to do is take this IP address. I want to go ahead and copy it because I want to actually go through the, the actual domain I want to use and change my domain name or my uh, IP address that my domain name is going to point to. And it all depends on what domain hosting that you use. If you use like um, Hover or Namecheap or GoDaddy, uh, all you got to do is go into your zone records and change out the A type to the IP address that your particular server is showing or is using. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Save record. Okay. Now it's usually a good idea to go ahead and get this started. So DNS, you know, cycle through, it will have enough time to go through and your domain name is pointed to that particular IP address. So before you continue on with the installation, 
because I'll show you with the installation. Oh, I also have to go into my email because I need the, because for this, it's not very uh, secured. I, I would suggest going with the SHA, SSH keys. So you don't have to do any kind of like password memorization or anything like that. It helps if you learn how to spell a Google you know, and get my information here. And what Hetzner is going to do, it's going to give you, it's, it'll say your server is created. It will give you a temporary password that you want to copy. All right, so it's showing that it is ready to go. Let me open up um, PowerShell. Yeah, if you're using Windows, uh, I would suggest using PowerShell, Linux, of course, Terminal. And of course, Mac is the same thing with the Terminal as well. I find that Power, Windows PowerShell is a little bit more capable than just, you know, the regular command prompt. So uh, let me go ahead and log in. Uh, root at, what was the IP? There's the IP. Yes, I do want to connect because it's going to give you a warning. So what I did is I gave, uh, set up a fingerprint for my uh, SH, SSH. Wow, I don't know how, why? That's such a hard thing for me to say. It's like, I think it's like, it's, it's, it's too many words. Brain con can't comprehend. All right, you're required to change your password, current password, new password. All right, so this is what you're gonna get after spinning up a new server with a one click over on Hetzner. You get this uh, configuration, the own cast configuration in this process, a Trefic proxy. Hopefully I said that right, sorry, Gabe. <laughs> Owncast and Watchtower will be set up accordingly together with all necessary dependencies. You will only need to set your desired domain and email, which will be used to configure the reverse proxy and to obtain Let's Encrypt certificates. Make sure your domain exists first. That's, that's an important part is you want to make sure that you have set up your domain name first. Uh, you don't want to get to here and be like, oh crap, what domain should I use? Bob.com. Oh, it's taken. Uh, you don't want to get into that um, kind of predicament. So make sure you have your domain name. Also make sure it's, it's being directed. You, you add the server IP address into the, as an A name or A name as um, your domain is pointing to. I know I'm, I'm doing a horrible job trying to explain this. I'm sorry. Hopefully you guys are following along. Um, so after you do all that, make sure you get that done first, wait a couple minutes, and then get started with the rest of the details. Now, this is gonna go, go, this is gonna go pretty quick. So what I'm gonna do is enter my domain name, which is at twotonwaffle.com. That's the domain I want my own cast instance to be on. Click okay or hit enter. Enter your email address, because this is important for the let's encrypt, because this is, it's very, you don't want, this is kind of like web development, website admin 101. You don't want a website as on, that is unsecured, especially nowadays. So make sure you have that, it, that SSL and this is the best way to do it with the Let's Encrypt because you know what? It's free. A lot of the stuff that I'm talking about is free. All you're paying for is the server infrastructure and that's, Less than 20 bucks. It's like at most, I think I uh, was around like $11. No, because I've run two Elmcast instances, is like 17 and change. So that's on Hetzner. And that's actually pretty cheap. So it's going to be half that if you just have one. So your email address is going to be two ton waffle at indiecreatorhub.com. And this is going to set up your Let's Encrypt. So is this the domain? Is this making sure? Is that, are you, what you put in? Is this what you want to do? Yes. Uh, email correct. Look over to Tom Waffle at anycreatorhub.com. Of course, it gives you a, a, a ger very generic admin and password. So if I go to Tom Waffle, first thing after logging in, go right to configuration, server setup. Change your password. And of course, for some odd reason in Firefox, you get this kind of problem. That's a little bug that creeps in. Isn't there's nothing problem. There's nothing going on with, you know, your, your instance. It's just Firefox. And for some odd reason, why? All right. It kind of freaks out for some odd reason. Okay. As you can see, perfectly fine. I just had to go to a Chrome based 
uh, browser. So this is your admin side of your, your particular instance. So this is pretty much where you are going to make all the magic happen for your instance. You can do your customization. You can set up uh, your your streaming, um, the titles, all the good good stuff. Uh, getting your install up and running uh, that was let's say less than ten minutes from starting up for an account on Hetzner, collecting uh, or setting up or clicking all the the things that you need to do, all your boxes and titles and stuff for the one click install. And as you can see, less than 10 minutes, you can have an Omcast server up and running. And again, once once it is up and running and you go to your site and it has the Omcast, you go to, if you see this, you go to Waffle, not my ghost site. If you see this, that means your server is up and running. And it's very imperative that once you do that, they go into the admin, change your password from the generic uh, default. Because if anyone has that default, they can easily get into your your, uh, your your admin side of things, and that's not good. Now, what you also want to do is go back into configuration, go to service setup, and this is very important too. If you are using uh, OBS or any kind of streaming software, is you want to set up your stream key. And what you want to do is, of course, go into admin, go to configuration, go to server setup and then go to stream keys. And right now it has just a default stream key. I'll go ahead, click the plus sign that is right below it. And of course, yeah, uh, go ahead, add that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change my view. So I'll delete that key. And so you guys won't start streaming on my, my account. So I know you, you guys aren't are going to do that. I can't tell, I can't say for the rest of the internet, they'd be on their best behavior. All right, so go back here. So you got your new key, it's ready to go. All you gotta do is copy, paste it in your OBS or whatever encoder that you use. I would go ahead and delete the default because you're not gonna use it. And uh, go ahead, set it up on OBS, the same way as you would set up any kind of RTMP. 